Allah sent his messengers to deliver humankind from darkness to light. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. That's also the ongoing mission of Islamic Research Foundation or IRF, spreading the truth of Allah's final message to mankind. Founded in 1991, IRF today offers some of the best services and facilities in the world for presenting an understanding of Islam in an objective and scientific way. Its programs are primarily focused on correcting misconceptions and promoting understanding of Islam. IRF also imparts Dawa training to Dais to aptly convey the message of Islam. Dr. Zakir Naik, president of IRF, reaching out across countries worldwide, from America to Europe to Africa to Asia to Australia, strives to clarify Islamic viewpoints. He dispels the many media myths and anti-Islamic prejudices propagated the world over by anti-Islamic forces. IRF today is creating a change in the hearts and minds of millions of Muslims and non-Muslims worldwide towards a proper understanding and respect for Islam. Have a question or doubt about Islam and its teachings? Now you know, one of the best resource centers to get convincing answers from is Islamic Research Foundation, 5658 Tandil Street, North Dongri, Mumbai, 400009, India, phone. 2373-6875 Fax 9122-2373-0689 Email Islam at the rate of IRF.net For more information, log on to our website www.irf.net We don't have records on that 9-11 was done by Muslims. It is just, just a hypothesis. Muslims are being targeted. They are called as terrorists. Directly and directly, they are the politicians. For the vote bank, for the power, for the money. The thousands of innocent people that have been killed in Afghanistan goes to Iraq. More people are being robbed, more people are being raped. The main purpose is what? Oil. It's an open secret. They are Buddhist terrorists, they are Hindu terrorists, they are Sikh terrorists, they are Jewish terrorists, we have Christian terrorists. Terrorism, Terrorism. is not the monopoly of any religion. It is not. Distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum. May peace be on all of you. Welcome to today's program. I, Dr. Muhammad Naik, am your host for today. We begin today's program with the Karat by Kari Rehan Ghalib. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحيا The translation of the verse from the glorious Quran, Surah Al Maida, chapter 5, verse 32. If anyone kills a human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it would be as if he has killed the whole of mankind. And if anyone saved any human being, it would be as if he has saved the whole of mankind. We thank the many Muslim and non-Muslim senior police officers 
advocates and intellectuals who have urged Dr. Zakir Naik to speak on this topic of terrorism and Muslims in a sensible manner. We also thank Justice Hosbet Suresh to have consented to be our chief guest today. Our chief guest, Justice Hosbet Suresh, is a former judge of the Bombay High Court who retired in 1991. A prominent human rights activist, he personifies the right blend of simplicity and righteousness. He regularly writes articles in the law journals as well as leading magazines and newspapers of India. His recent book, Fundamental Rights as Human Rights, is remarkable. He has spoken at many international forums. He is well known for his report on the riots in Mumbai in 1992-93, entitled The People's Verdict. As member of the Citizens' Tribunal on the Gujarat carnage against Muslims, his report, Crime Against Humanity, released in November 2002 in Ahmedabad, is notable and very widely acclaimed. His reports on excesses against Dalits in Mumbai, students in Kerala, Christians in Gujarat, and others, too, are quite notable. An apt chief guest to address our audience today. Brothers and sisters, let's welcome Justice Hosbeth Suresh. Friends, I think I should begin with Lord Denning, a great judge from England, because he's no more. I'll just say what he said once. Judges do not speak as actors do to please. Judges do not speak as advocates do to persuade. Judges do not speak as historians do to relate the past. Judges speak to give judgments. I'm a retired judge, not a tired judge. I give no judgments, but I think I speak. And I believe in speaking. I speak against violation of human rights. I speak against wherever there is injustice, wherever there is violence. I speak against that. And I always expect the judges to come out and speak. If judges cannot speak against violation of human rights, injustice, who else can speak? It is the experience all over the world that every violence by the terrorists has only resulted in more violence by the state. It's a sort of vicious circle and it can never bring about any lasting solution. In 1984, we had a certain bomb blasts in Delhi and around Delhi. The Khalistanis, it was Khalistanis uh, Movement, Khalistani movement was very, very active at that time. The Khalistanis were terrorists at that time. So what we did, how to control the terrorists, we brought TADA law. TADA, the most draconian law. Uh, TADA has been misused, as you all know. And uh, what all things happened under TADA law? Large number of innocent people were arrested, tortured, kept inside. I remember Justice Ajit Singh Baines, a retired judge of the Punjab High Court, an elderly man. And what he did in a public meeting, he was talking of, of the oppression that was going on in Punjab elsewhere. And he said in a public meeting, someday we will be free from this. Now, the Tata law had the provision for disruptive activities. Nobody could have said anything about disruption of this country. Nobody could have spoken about cessation.